What is going on guys? Welcome to part one of building the Bright Sky weather app. In this video, we're gonna start creating our project, stubbing out a bunch of files, and talking about what's to come in the future videos. Before we jump into things, hit that like button down below. Let's open up Xcode and let's start by creating a brand new project. We're working with Xcode 14.3.1 since 15 is just around the corner. So this should all be fine in 15 as well if you're watching this in the future. But let's go and create our project. We'll stick with the app template under iOS. Go ahead and call your project whatever you like. I'm going to call it Bright Sky, uh, basically after Apple's Dark Sky weather company acquisition. We're going to stick with Swift as the language. Storyboard as the interface. We're going to be working with UIKit programmatically. No Swift UI since I do still feel UIKit is more prevalent. And let's go and create this. Toss it wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop. And first things first, we want to expand our Xcode window here. Let's give it a second to get its life together. It cannot launch using specified run destination. Let's ignore this pop-up here. Alrighty, and let's select a simulator. So we've got a 14 Pro selected. Let's give it a build and run. Let me also full screen Xcode while that's doing its thing. Now we want to do one thing before we jump into creating some files and that thing, let's see where my simulator went, there's my simulator. That thing is actually registering the bundle ID in the Apple developer portal, which I've actually gone ahead and done here, io.iosacademy.brightsky. And you wanna make sure you scroll down and check the weather kit capability. This is important since we are gonna be using Apple's native weather kit framework to be fetching weather data. No other third party APIs in this series. So once you've done that, let's jump on over to Xcode. Make sure that your bundle ID does in fact match. There we have our app running, it's an empty app, whole lot going on. Uh, make sure your bundle ID matches. Let's jump into our capabilities tab and let's add the capability for weather kit. Of course, you need to have it checked in the portal as well. And let's uh, start talking a little bit about this project. So we're gonna be leveraging the model view view model architecture. We're gonna keep things as organized as possible. And we are also gonna get rid of this storyboard since we're not doing any drag and drop today or in these videos to come, we're gonna do everything programmatically. So let's delete that storyboard. And we also need to delete the reference of the storyboard in a few places, namely in the property list, the info.p list. So you'll come to your project here and hit this info tab and you wanna delete the following. The first is this item here, which references our main storyboard. And the second thing you want to delete in the application scene manifest, if you go ahead and start opening this up, all the way down, you have the option for main as well. Delete that as well. You can just select it and hit backspace. Now when you run your app, actually you won't see anything because we do need to set up the window and our primary view controller manually now. So let's do that before we start creating some folders and some files we're gonna be working with later. But first and foremost, in our view controller, let's give our view controller a background color so we can at least tell when we run our app if we do see this screen indeed or we don't see it and things are wrong. So I'll make this blue here. And the next thing I want to do is jump into the scene delegate and this is where we will set up our window and its related scene. In this first function here, we'll delete all the comments and we'll use this existing code and we'll say this is our window scene. We want to create our view controller, which is an instance of the view controller our app template gave us. We'll create a window, which will be of type UI window with the window scene right up above. So window scene is going to be window scene like so. We're gonna say that this window has a root view controller of the view controller right up above. We'll say self.window equals window. And before that, we'll say window, make key and visible. So now that we've got this in place, give your app a build and run, and we should see our blue screen, which should let us know we're actually in good shape. We've got rid of the storyboard and we're all programmatic. So cool, good deal. What do we wanna do next? Well, we wanna create some folders on the left and start organizing some of our files that we also need to create. So let's create some of these folders. You can right click and do new group or you can use a shortcut and hold command uh, option N to create these groups. So we want a folder for views and we certainly want some view models to configure said views. We're gonna want some models for our data types. 
we are going to also want controllers. I like having a other folder as well. Some folks like to call it resources, call it whatever you know works best for you. But let's start organizing this stuff. So app delegate and scene delegate, well, this kind of fits into others, so I'll toss it there. View controller, clearly a controller, we'll toss it there. Uh, assets and our lawn screen nicely fit into other, so boom, there they go. And we basically have our overall structure. I will go ahead and create one more folder called managers. And this is to house a few different types of manager objects that we will be creating. Uh, namely our location manager and our in-app purchase manager. Our project, as mentioned in the intro video, will definitely be including a, a paywall and subscription element where users can upgrade to see more weather information use, utilizing uh, Revenue Cat. So let's, let me, let's actually go and create some of those manager objects. So I'll create a new Swift file here. And the first one will be location manager. Alrighty, the next one here we can create will be, all right, come on Swift, let's go. Okay, Swift file, we'll call this IAP manager, otherwise known as in-app purchase manager. And what I'll also do in this case is we're gonna be utilizing Apple's weather kit all over the place and it'd be nice if we could co-locate all of the logic to fetch weather in a single place. So what I'll do here is I'll also create a file and I'll call it weather manager. That way we're not calling, you know, the weather service that Apple provides all over the place and controllers and here and there. We can co-locate all the code. So let's start stubbing all of this stuff out. So we'll have a final class location manager. We'll say static, let shared. We'll have this as a singleton. And we'll also have this inherit from NS object. Of course, we're eventually going to use core location in here. And our location manager kind of does what it kind of sounds like it's going to do. It's going to manage locations, particularly fetching the user's current location for which we want to get weather. So that's good to go. Next up, we've got in app purchase manager. So we'll say final class IP manager. And once more, this will have a singleton, so we'll say IAP manager, and we'll privatize that initializer like so. So IAP manager will deal with you know getting state for the user being a subscribed user, if they've upgraded or not, you know, if their subscription is still valid, and once more, we're gonna leverage revenue cats to do so. So here we are going to say, uh, let's do to do, bring in, Revenue cat. Alrighty. Next up, we've got weather manager. This one is also pretty self explanatory. Let's import weather kit, which we will end up using in the videos to come. I will say weather manager is a singleton as well. Alrighty. Weather manager is an instance of weather manager. We're going to privatize that initializer so we don't inadvertently instantiate this elsewhere. And we're basically just going to have a single function, which is going to be public func get weather for location. And this will be a CL location. And the reason autocomplete isn't cooperating is because we need to bring in a core location where that CL location symbol comes from. Alrighty, so these are our managers looking pretty good. Let's start talking about what controllers we're going to need. So our application, the way we're gonna design this, if you recall, is we're gonna have two tabs down here, one for weather and one for settings. Settings is where we can show things like rate our app, privacy policy, as well as information about the user upgrading to the pro plan of our app. So what we essentially need is at a bare minimum, three view controllers. Now we've already got this template view controller. I am going to rename this to be weather view controller. And I'll also rename the file name here. Let's make sure we do the whole name. So weather view controller. Let's create a, another Coco touch class. This is going to inherit view controller as well. And I'll call this our settings view controller. Create it like so. We can get rid of all this uh, commented out kind of boilerplate, if you will. We'll say the background color is system background and just leave it like that for the time being. 
Now we also want to embed this inside of a tab bar controller. So let's create a subclass of a UI tab bar controller is what I'm looking for. I'm just gonna call it tab view controller. Now this is going to be the controller that will handle setting its own tab view controllers. And we'll actually do that here since it's fairly straightforward. So we'll say tab one will be a weather view controller like so. Tab two will be a settings view controller. And we only need two T's there. And finally, we can say self dot set view controllers and we will pass a array here and this array is going to have these controllers embedded inside of a navigation controller so essentially these weather controller and setting controllers themselves will be embedded inside of a navigation controller should we need to push and pop other controllers on and off the stack. If you're not familiar with you know, the concept of navigation controllers or uh, the way we're nesting here, I encourage you to go and watch some other videos that I've got on the channel that go into depth about a lot of these patterns since they are pretty important. So now we go ahead and try to build the project and we run into an issue and that issue is Back in our scene delegate, we're trying to create this view controller and it doesn't exist. And the reason it doesn't exist is because we just renamed it. We want our root controller to be the tab view controller like so. Let's jump back here and give these tabs titles. So we'll say tab one dot title is going to be weather. Here we'll say tab two dot title is going to be settings and let's give this a build and run and let's see what other issues we are running into so it looks like we have private init here and let me see why this is yelling at me the reason it's yelling at me is because we are inheriting from ns objects so this is overriding the super class so we don't actually need that there so let's give this a build and run and we do actually have tabs at the bottom you just can't see them well you can kind of see it actually because the settings label is here but if you click on it you'll see that the tabs are indeed changing and you can also see subtly the title at the top now clearly one thing that we're missing here is icons for our tabs at the bottom so let's go and take care of that so what we'll do is we'll pull out this navigation controller that we are tossing in here and we'll call it nav1. And just like that, we'll pull out this other one as well and I'll call this one nav2 and you'll see momentarily why I'm doing that. Now what we want to say is for nav1, the tab bar item, the thing you see at the bottom, will be a UI tab bar item. And we want to create this with a title, an image, and a tag. So the first one will be weather. The image will be a SF symbol. So I'm going to guess that maybe weather is a symbol. We'll find out momentarily. And we'll do the same thing for the settings icon. So we're going to have a gear icon as the image, settings as the title, and this will be on nav2. So give that a build and run. Let's see what we see at the bottom. So we definitely see a gear here, but there is no weather icon. So let me actually open up SF symbols here. I've got the beta running, so we'll see if it cooperates. But let me search for weather in here, and there should be some type of weather. So here we have sun max triangle. That's not that. Uh, it's kind of a bit of an alarming uh, logo. But what we'll maybe look for is like sun and cloud. That should be a symbol somewhere in here. Um, anyways, you can use any of these, you know, any of these uh, images and icons that you feel best fits the look and feel of the app you are building. I'm just being picky here to try to find something that is suitable with a sun and cloud, but all I see are rain clouds. So let's go ahead and use this one here. So you can hit Command Shift C to copy the name. It's cloud.sun and give this a build and run. And alrighty, cool. So we got a icon at the bottom. You just can't see it with the blue background because the icon tint indeed is also blue. So let's come back to our primary controller and change its background to system background, which will be white or black based on light mode or dark mode. 
So good deal. So we've got our controller set up. We've stubbed out a couple of files. We've got weather kits integrated. And by integrated, once again, I remind you that in App Store, uh, your App Store Apple developer account, rather, I should say, not App Store Connect, you do need to register that bundle ID. It does need to match and you do need to check the weather kit capability. Otherwise, in the later videos, when we try to fetch the weather, you're going to run into a whole host of issues of not getting a valid response back. So that is all I've got for this first project setup video. Um, not a whole lot going on, but definitely important to get our organization right up front because later on, it does help us immensely when it comes time to start creating all the various aspects uh, of the project, be it the views, be it the functionality to you know let the user upgrade, so on and so forth. So let me know in the comments if you ran into any issues. If you have any questions, drop a like as per usual. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.